Energy storage is likely to play a significant role in Hawaii's energy future. But anyone with a laptop or cell phone more than a couple years old knows that they don't last forever. Joining us this morning to discuss the world's largest second-use battery system is Boris von Bormann. Boris was formerly a senior, senior executive with German energy storage manufacturer Sonnen and is now CEO of the newly established Mercedes-Benz Energy Americas LLC. Please join me in giving a warm welcome and aloha to Boris von Bormann. So we have Daimler, uh, which is the parent company of Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz Cars uh, obviously is mostly well known around the world. We do make uh, a few cars in various sectors, also electric, which I'm going to get later in. We have Mercedes-Benz trucks, Mercedes-Benz vans, the Daimler buses, and the financial services, which are our key partners and key divisions of Daimler within the global group. You can see some of the revenue numbers, some of the employee numbers. We're now over 240,000 uh, employees worldwide. And um, now we have some few people trickling in. Thank you for joining me. Um, and then what's uh, interesting below, and which most people do not know, is uh, the whole plethora of brands that uh, owned or partially owned by the Daimler Group on a global scale. So we have Maybach, which you might know is the high-end luxury vehicle brand. Uh, we do have Mercedes Me, which is our app. Digital Internet of Things, we have the AMG brand, Fast Cars, EQ, which I'm going to get in later, uh, the Mitsubishi Fusos, which is a collaboration between Daimler and Mitsubishi, which uh, brings electric trucks also to uh, the world stage. We have the Smart brand, uh, then we have various brands on the trucks. We do make the Thomas school buses, which a lot of people might not know that that's a Daimler brand. Then we have a uh, very interesting, the Car2Go brand, which is a shared ride services. Movil, which is a company that allows you to use the most efficient way from to get A to B. Then we have My Taxi, which is the Uber on the taxi side. And then obviously the truck financials. And now we're getting to a few people here, so that's good. So from the key divisions uh, moving forward, is uh, since we are an energy company uh, and an energy conference, and you're thinking, what is Mercedes-Benz doing at an energy conference? We have now formed through Mercedes-Benz Energy, which is formed in April in Germany, a division that is looking at everything outside of the vehicle. So, if you're looking at an e-mobility play, which Daimler is highly committed to, how do we push that into the world, and what's necessary for end customer, for a fleet manager, for a city, for infrastructure, a metropolitan area? to put a large vehicle fleet of electric vehicles onto the grid. So we're looking at that on a residential level. So we're looking at, we call it EQ at home. So it's the first step into zero carbon living and mobility, which allows you to basically fully integrate your home into the electric vehicle world. So you're looking at everything from the financial. So how do we wrap this into one financial solution? Into your EV charger, your app interface, looking at the car, of course, energy storage, PV, your solar energy, and as well as your smart home applications, how do we tie that all into one ecosystem? So as a group within Daimler, we actually set up a division to support all of our businesses around e-mobility. So we're looking at K's. K stands for connected, autonomous, shared, and services, and electric. So it's within Daimler a division that, that looks at everything in a holistic way that's necessary to drive e-mobility into the world. So under the EQ brand, Mercedes-Benz is currently developing a total ecosystem. We currently have eight plug-in hybrids on the market, and we're looking to bring out 10 fully electric vehicles by the end of 2025. Within that lineup, we have the new EQ car, which was launched at the April Auto Show, and I'm going to show you that, if this works. Perfect. So this is the new fully electric vehicle that's going to be launched in 2019, at the end of 2018, introduced to the public. We showed it at the April Auto Show in Paris, as I mentioned to you. And this vehicle, as you can see, is built on a fully electric platform. It has a range of 500 kilometers, roughly 350 to 380 miles. And as you can see, it's a whole new design of electric mobility that we're going to bring out to the market, from which we're going to expand all of our offerings into the market. So now, as we are a car company, now you're wondering, as I mentioned before, Mercedes-Benz Energy. So where does Mercedes-Benz Energy come from? 
we are actually the manufacturers of our, all of our batteries in our vehicles. So we have our fully owned Accumotive. It's a company out in northern Germany, which allows us to manufacture all the batteries for our electric vehicles, trucks, buses, and vans. <coughs> Excuse me. From that company, uh, we thought, how do we mobilize and utilize the manufacturing capabilities that we have at that company? So we have our cells that we bring into the company, and then we bring it into battery modules. From that, we integrate these into battery packs, and obviously then push them into e-mobility, so into our electric vehicles. But then we looked at the opportunities that we have to do around that offering and how we can bring it into the market through stationary energy storage, which I, as you know, or some of you might know, know a lot about. So that's how it was brought into a company, and we have now our current production facility in northern Germany that turns out our batteries for our electric vehicles. And then we're expanding that currently under construction, which uh, quadruples actually our capacity, and it's going to go online in 2018. So now we're going to get to the actual project that I'm going to give you a case study on, which is our second life storage uh, that we use from an e-mobility perspective. So this storage system uh, uses the smart car. How many of you know the smart car? If I show hands, a few people. All right, that's good. So it's a Daimler brand, as you know, or hopefully you know. Uh, it's a small, fun city car. And we had our first test fleets in the market and fully electric since 2012. So we're bringing that product back into a second life opportunity. So we had that in the market. We had in the US, for example, a test fleet of 5,000 vehicles that are now coming slowly back from the lease that we, uh, people purchased from test fleets that were out into the market. And the question is, what do you do around e-mobility once you have these large capacities of batteries coming back online and coming back into the market that can't be used in vehicles anymore? So we at Daimler looked at an option which would allow us to repurpose those batteries into energy storage and make them useful for grid applications. As you can imagine, the the strain on a battery in an automotive setting is very different than a stationary storage setting. So you need large power for a very short time, and at a certain capacity, the, the capacity is not enough or, or not satisfactory enough to be included in an electric vehicle. So once we move that battery out of the vehicle, it still has about 10 to 15 years uh, lifetime left to be repurposed into energy storage. So that's what we did here. So when you can take a look at the a slide here you see at the left is a, a typical battery block that gets integrated in the storage systems. And then you can see on the right, you see a forecast of second use batteries that are coming onto the market that can be repurposed for that purpose. So we're looking at a huge curve coming up, especially around 2022, 23, you see the hockey stick really taking off. When we see that the penetration of electric vehicles are going to be really um, out in the market and where we see not just Daimler, but all the car manufacturers really bringing out the electric vehicle offering. So we have already significant uh, quantities of batteries back. So we at Daimler have already this year coming about 35 megawatt hours back from electric vehicles that can be used into energy storage applications. In that, so we created these projects, and this is the first one that we built in Germany, that allows us to repurpose those batteries and bring them back into that application. So as you can see, it's a 13 megawatt hour facility. What we did, we used about 1,000 batteries coming back from our vehicles. We repurposed them, made sure, checked them, checked their state of health, and all matched them to bring them back into a storage system. These batteries are aggregated into this 13 megawatt storage facility, and then we have them allocated right next to a recycling plant. So what we have as a life cycle, and show that's gonna be later to you, it's coming from the vehicle, outside the vehicles, into a storage facility, and then right into recycling right after that. So as you can see here, this is the total life cycle of the system, looking from a battery which was manufactured by us into a vehicle, into its life cycle of the, of the car. Obviously, normally we estimate longer than three years, right? If you buy a car, you might want to hold on to it longer than three years. However, this test fleet was purposely designed for a three-year lifetime. So after three years, then we took it out of the car. We bring it into a check analysis program, which allows us to check the state of health, see if the battery can be reused. 
bring them into the energy storage facility, and then after it has its useful lifetime there, which we estimate around 10 to 15 years, we're going to repurpose this into recycling. We use this with uh, various project partners. So as you can see, I mean, Daimler is not fully vertically integrated on that, on that platform. Obviously, we're looking at that. We just made a couple of investments into companies. One of the investments is on the board here, which is the mobility house. They do the control layer and the operations of the energy storage system. We do have our own vehicles, batteries that we brought into this. And then obviously the recycling is a third party that we use for that. So the economics around uh, second use can be tr quite tricky. And there's a lot of opinions on how this can be used. And I'm going to show you some exemplary model on how a value stack of a second battery could use and also can be used in energy storage. We have on the left, you see a new storage product. So that's about the cost stack that you have. And then we take down from there the different parts that are necessary to make second use work and what's the residual value of a second use battery. You have the inverters, auxiliaries, and a storage system. Everybody knows about that part. We have the battery pack, of course, and there's a price range. So you're looking at a new price point versus future price range. We have a second use burden, which means logistics, transportation, that's part of it. Uh, we use uh, a little less capacity. So uh, if, if you have a second use burden, it means it has been its primary life, so you have less capacity, obviously, than a new battery, so you need to decrease the value of that. You have the transport for the battery, you have the testing and the refurbishment, and then you have the development investment into a second use storage system. So once you take all of that off the value stack, that leaves you with your second use opportunity. And then you have to see, obviously, is that price cost of a current battery that you have in the market still valuable enough to put this into a market? One thing that's missing off here is the cost of recycling. So if you would take a battery out of the car, put it into recycling right now, there's a cost for that as well, of course. So this kind of gives you the economic stack of a second-use battery. And you can see that if you have that logistic chain down and where you can make most efficient use of it, you can actually create a value out of it where you can make a storage facility work on a second-use case. So in the project that we did in Lunen, Germany, with the 13 megawatt hour facility that I showed you, you can see that there is a few success factors that worked for this project. One of the things is that, of course, the energy policy, and we talked a lot about energy policy here. We talked about last year and how we can make that work for Hawaii. It's really important that we can monetize those type of systems onto the market so that we have a value proposition that we can work, work around that. One of the things in Germany, obviously, it's been a solar state. So there's a lot of supportive technology and, and um, policies around it. And that helped us to make this project work. We established this project without any government subsidies. So that's a key factor. So this project works in its energy market policy and in its market adaptation and, and the monetary applications that we have without any government subsidies. We have the development investment on our end. We have the pilot program that allowed us to use the batteries. And then we have very fully functional batteries. So they're coming off live after three years, so we can use them to high capacity. We lowered the transportation costs by using the batteries from a very single pilot program. And then we used the same model of battery in one application. As you can, I showed you before, there's a big range of cars that are coming out from many different car manufacturers, from our own self. So Daimler, just looking at the Mercedes-Benz brand. So you can see that over the lifetime, you'll have now different types of batteries, and that's going to be the challenge in the future. How do we make different types of batteries work in the second life stage? So how can we integrate different types of batteries in one application, still balance them, make them work, bring out the same use capacity, and bring that out to the market so that it's beneficial to the world and also works in a technical aspect? Then uh, we have project partners, I think. And that's one of the key things, and it's very important for the wine market as well, as you all know is that partnerships are key, right? So not everyone is an expert in one single piece. So we don't claim to be the expert in uh, marketing in energy storage system on the energy market. But we have partners that know how to do that. So the strategic partnerships is key to make a storage application work. And then um, leveraging those expertise. So looking at how can we make an expertise work from 
a EPC that builds these? How do we build it most efficiently? How can we get the logistics working so that we can transport the batteries to that application in a very efficient manner and therefore reduce the cost and make the project work? And so that kind of gives you an overview on what we have on the 13 megawatt second use lifetime and um, how we made this project work within the Mercedes-Benz world. So my time is up already. <laughs> so I, quick thank you. Hope it was enjoyable and informative for you. And uh, if there's any questions, I'm available afterwards. Thank you. <laughs>